In today's Conquering Codependency, God's Way, The Survival Mechanism of Fawning with Dr. Allison Cook. Ready? Let's do this. YouTube channel. I'm Eileen Thompson, founder of Treasured Ministries. And especially if this is your very first time here, I want to say welcome to the family. Gosh, I'm just loving our little community and how it is growing and really coming together. Um, Inside of today's video, I want to talk to you about the survival mechanism of fawning. And to do that, I've invited Dr. Allison Cook to be on our show today. Now, you may have heard of the survival mechanism of flight, of freeze, or of fight. But have you heard of fawning. You know, um, the fawning survival mechanism uh, was unknown to me until I read Dr. Allison uh, Cook's book called The Best You. And so I was so excited and couldn't wait to bring to you today Dr. Allison Cook to share more about the fawning survival mechanism how that impacts your true sense of who God has created you to be, your unique identity, and then what you can do uh, about it. She's here today to talk to us about that and uh, about codependency. Dr. Allison Cook is a psychologist. Allison studied at Dartmouth College, Denver Seminary, and University of Denver. Uh, where she got her PhD and specialized in the integration of theology and psychology. She is the co-author of Boundaries for Your Soul and most recently this great book, I've got it right here, called The Best You. And now I invite you to sit back and soak in this great uh, teaching and information uh, from my interview with Dr. Allison Cook. Dr. Allison Cook, author of The Best You, welcome to the Live Treasure podcast and the Treasured Ministries YouTube channel. We are just delighted that you are here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Well, you know what, when I read a book that has changed my life, I want to share it with everybody. And I have to say um, that your book, The Best of You, is just such great, rich truth. Um, and I know we're going to be talking about uh, that today, but I just want to thank you so much for, for writing it. And if you're listening to this, um, listen to this interview, but definitely get her book. I highly recommend it. We'll leave all those links for you in the podcast and YouTube uh, YouTube description. So let's um let's go ahead and just dive uh, mm -hmm. deep deep into sort of the the topic of this of, of your book, which is how much our real selves as women mm -hmm. uh, can can get buried inside of. Uh, the lives that we live to the point that we don't even really know who we are or what we want or mm -hmm. or any of that. Mm -hmm. um, and so many times inside of Treasure Ministries, I will hear that same that same story. So why do you think that it's hard uh, for women to recognize and value what we think and what we want? Why is that <laughs> so hard? Yeah, it's the million dollar question because it's just so universally, it seems, you know, most women relate to that, you know, just sort of the deer on the headlights of, and as a therapist, what I began to notice is women would come in. I saw, certainly saw it in my own life. I talk about that in the book, but as a therapist, you know, I'll hear, you know, kind of the whole first session at the end of the session, if I say very gently, you know, what is it that you want? Mm. It's like the question most women have hardly even given themselves permission 
right. to consider. Right. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. I think I, I go in it, into in the book, I think it's partly just the way our, you know, we're kind of conditioned culturally to be good mm -hmm. girls, to be kind, to be nice. Um, or, you know, whether it's in our family of origin, even the best of families, um, I think there are some ways in which we've picked it up as a, as I talk about in the book, as a sort of coping strategy for yeah. trauma, if we can make, or, or even for some of our wounds, if we can make other people feel good, that makes mm -hmm. us feel good. And so we start to take our self-esteem through being kind mm -hmm. and nice, right? Mm -hmm. And that feels good. And then that's reinforced in so many of our faith communities. Well, you're such a nice person, right? And, and so we yes. were sort of reinforced to only think about other people. We're not taught that it's actually healthy and wise to consider our own needs and desires. And actually Jesus wants us to do that. Jesus asks that question, what do you want before yeah. he heals? So yeah. it's, you know, that it's just sort of something I don't think we're taught. And then there's these layers of reinforcement for never considering our own needs and desires. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more um, that, you know, we're taught and then there's those layers of reinforcement. And so taught mm -hmm. through childhood, taught through yeah. our culture, um, yeah. reinforced a lot of times inside the church. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think a lot of times pastors that are giving these messages, I don't think they intentionally mean to do no. it. But I think that it's it's definitely um, in inside of there. And then you mentioned um, coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. I'd love to, because one of the things when I, when I read your book about a specific coping mechanism that sort of mm -hmm. reinforces all that is the coping mechanism of fawning. And when mm -hmm. I read that, I was like, hang on just a minute here. <laughs> I, I know about freeze. I know about mm -hmm. flight. Mm -hmm. um, I know about fight, mm -hmm. but I've never heard fawning. Can yeah. Here with our audience, you know, just sort of in a nutshell, what fawning is. Yeah, it's this, it's one of the four fear responses, these survival responses. Uh, the therapist Pete Walker is the first one who named it, um, and and it's just brilliant what he realized, and then has since stood stood up. Um, is that there's a, a fourth response which is fawning, and it's not fighting, and it's not fleeing. It's winning over it's it's mm -hmm. it's an end so what happens is if you're a child if you imagine your parents are fighting or your parents are fighting with the sibling or you know kids are being mean and you figure out that if i am just small enough nice enough if i can help them enough if i can say enough kind words mm -hmm. then i'll get some hit of reward which mm -hmm. you know biochemically reinforce feels good I get mm -hmm. some hit of, oh, you're so nice, or oh, you're so helpful. And that gets reinforced in my nervous system to where it mm -hmm. becomes an impulse. So right. fast forward to adulthood, and all you know how to do is read the cues in the room and try to work overtime to make sure everybody else is happy. That's mm -hmm. become literally conditioned. It's a response. It's just in the same way that a fight response has been conditioned to the minute you sense yeah. confrontation, you go, into fight, your adrenaline spikes and you almost can't help it, right? It's almost right. outside of your conscious control. Same thing with fawning. You literally in that moment, you know, your whole nervous system is positioned to go, how can I help? What can I do? What do you yes. need? Whatever you need. And in fact, in that situation, you might be the one being hurt. You might be the wow. one being taken advantage yeah. of. You yeah. might just be at the end of your limits and not needing to be the one, but you don't even have that as an option because you've been so taught and conditioned over time to respond in that pleasing way that this is the fawn response it's fascinating and, and once i read about mm -hmm. it i was like oh my goodness this is and this is what again like you said i don't think intentionally in many cases we get reinforced as christian women aren't yes. you wonderful aren't you so kind you know and yes it's like actually i need that to be called out Indeed. Yes, 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 yes. And, and and I mean, she goes, Allison goes in more into this, into the book. Mm -hmm. And I just highly recommend it again, that, that you look at that. Um, it was really like, bam, light bulb moments for me going on and on. But, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I think like, and maybe even some people watching would say, um, and even when you, we were talking before about um, not valuing what we want, mm -hmm. even like saying those words, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes even gives me pause. Well, isn't that not being mm -hmm. 
a good Christian, mm-hmm. aren't I being selfish when yeah. I do that? So, yeah. I mean, do you ever get this pushback or, do, or like, is, is it selfish to, to like pay attention to what you want? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes. I get it all the time to the point where right in chapter one, I put a big chart <laughs> that talks about the difference between selfishness and what I call selfhood. And that's mm-hmm. what we're not taught a lot about in the church. That's a part of what drove me to, into my doctor work is that that missing piece where Jesus says, love God, love others as yourself. yourself. Well, that as yourself part, we're not really taught, you know, we kind of have right. this superficial idea of maybe I need to take a day off, you know, and that's not all bad self-care, but this is a deeper thing. It's a relationship with mm-hmm. yourself. It's an honoring of this person mm-hmm. that God made that bears God's image. And mm-hmm. so selfhood is that you-ness. It's that beautiful soul that God made uniquely. Yeah. And to honor that self, that selfhood is not, so selfishness would be saying, it's all about me. I do mm-hmm. what I want. You know, and we, mm-hmm. we hear that in our culture a little bit. That's not what it's about. But kind of on that flip side of that is this selflessness Mm -hmm. which is, it's never about me. I don't matter. I don't, that's what we're kind of taught. That's not healthy either. The Mm -hmm. way of Jesus, as I read the gospels is this selfhood. It's a strong sense of self that is anchored Mm -hmm. in a strong sense of God. And from that place, you are far healthier and far more equipped to love others well from a place of truth inside of who you are. Right. Right. And so then like, you know, it's, it's almost like, it's not even really love. Right. If you're, if you're Correct. operating out of that, because, you know, I'm really trying to get my needs met, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, instead of, um, instead of operating out of, out of who I am. That's right. um, and, and so you, you mentioned Jesus, um, and, mm. um, and saying that he operated from this place of, of a strong self. And obviously mm-hmm. Jesus did not sin. The Bible Correct. says that. Yeah. So, so can you unpack that a little bit more yeah. um, and show us that biblical truth there? Yeah, we see in Jesus a full range of emotions. We see Jesus, and again, not sinning, right? Showing mm-hmm. anger. We see him showing grief, angst. Um, we see him as a very vibrant living, he, you know, during his time on earth, just as we are. We also see Jesus with a very strong sense of no and yes, clear Mm -hmm. inner convictions. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just nice. He wasn't a doormat. (laughs) He really wasn't. He was very, he, we know this, you know, when you read the gospels, I'm like, man, you know, sometimes he went after people and again, didn't sin. Sometimes he retreated. He moved away from people. He understood what he needed in a given moment. He understood what the person in front of him what that relationship required of him. Did it require grace or Mm -hmm. did it require some tough love, Mm -hmm. some courage, some Mm -hmm. strong statements? Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by a strong sense of self. He was governed by, you know, again, it wasn't just this, I'll just give over to everybody else, which is how we've thought of as selflessness. Even his selfless acts were rooted in a conviction for a higher purpose. It wasn't about pleasing other people. As you said, it was about loving and, and therefore, because he had the bigger picture, he would lay down his life and the ultimate sacrifice out of a purpose. Right. And that's what I think we miss when we're, when we don't have a sense of self, we're pleasing to get your, your touch. You touched on it beautifully leads right into codependency. Mm-hmm. We're, tr- we're really doing it because we're afraid because we want their, someone's love. It's mm-hmm. not out of I'm going to do this for you because I know this is actually what you need, which often requires a lot of brave action and a strong sense of self, a lot of confidence. Yes. 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 A lot of confidence and, um, and, and really a redefinition of, of what love is because, you know, God tells us no. um, And so no is not unloving. I mean, like, right. right. He's just told people, exactly. He's told people no, but how do you know what your yes and your no is if you don't know God's purpose for your life? Like how how he's wired you and what your limitations are and all these sorts of things. Um, And then, you know, and then I found myself like trying to get people to read my mind. Yes. Tell me that I need these things because I like there's, you know, from that, uh, that fawning response, it's almost like you feel guilty for, for, for even asking that. Um, yeah. 
And um, and and this kind of goes into you know the the fawning response and and all of that. And we um, we talked about um, that how we have these defense mechanisms and so forth that come from um, from that place of trauma where we have problems like setting those healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. Um, let's talk about trauma and mental illness for a minute. And Mm -hmm. why are those two lumped together? Yeah, it's, it's a tricky conversation right now in the field of psychology. There's sort of a shift from this mental illness model to a trauma informed model. I think there's room for both and they definitely are Mm -hmm. related. Um, But without giving too much information, I would say mental illness was kind of more this idea that if you have symptoms of depression or anxiety, Mm -hmm. you've got a sickness, you're ill, a trauma informed approach comes into that and says, something happened. happened. There's a reason, right? You, you mm-hmm. and, and sometimes it's both. Sometimes you mm-hmm. might have a, you might be predisposed to depression. So there's something in your mind and also some things in your environment, you know, usually when you're young mm-hmm. happen that create this sort of nervous system response. It's, we now know it's in the body that you can begin to heal by asking this question instead of what's wrong with you ask this question, what's happened? Let's learn about Mm. your story. Let's Mm -hmm. look back, see where there's some wounds that might be able to be healed versus, Mm -hmm. you know, here's what's wrong with you, take a pill. And and not that there's anything wrong. Sometimes we do need to take medication. Sometimes there is something, but there's sort of this both and of, oh, we're learning. Oh my goodness. Almost always is there some sort of wound in the background of our, you know, our problems that we have. Right, right. And and why is this happening? And I think, um, and and to do that, we kind of have to open up Pandora's box, right? And look at the painful parts in in our past, um, which is, you know, hard to do. Um, Yes. uh, But what would be, I guess, like if somebody's watching today, what would be the motivation that you could give them for being able to face that, those parts of those pains? I think that that's a great question, right? Because who wants to, you know, open up the wounds? Um, the motivation is freedom. The motivation mm-hmm. is because as you face your pain, mm-hmm. as you have that honesty with yourself and with God to go, oh, there's some tough things that happen here. Again, pace yourself. If there's a big bucket, you mm-hmm. know, a big backlog, do it with mm-hmm. a therapist. Don't do it alone. Don't go mm-hmm. down that road alone. But guess what? You you learn the way that God wants your designed you to operate in the world. You grow in your capacity for intimacy with other people, for Mm -hmm. authentic connections with other people. Mm -hmm. You grow in, I always talk about, you grow in the fruit of the spirit. We often talk about the fruit of the spirit extending toward others. You learn how to apply that toward yourself, how to be kind to yourself, how to be patient with yourself, how to be loving and, and, you know, and, and gentle with yourself, Mm -hmm. right? You, and I mean, who doesn't want to have more of that fruit right growing from the inside out that's the fruit of doing the hard work of facing the past in many yeah. cases yeah 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 that's good stuff i love that i've never thought about that giving the fruit of your fruit of the spirit uh to yourself because yeah. so many women um will just i mean just join voices with the enemy and just yes. beat up with the self yes. the self-deprecating thought that's that's yes. great insight re- really there but and as you know we talk a lot about codependency here because <laughs> that you talk about like uh you know having that aha moment where you're like wait a minute something is not right yeah. um i that was you know my story and the codependency looked like I was following all the rules and doing everything yeah. right. But then when the crash happened, it was like, okay, there's something that I'm missing here. Um, and that yeah. was certainly um, my journey. Yeah. Tell us more about yeah. codependency <laughs> um, and how to notice codependent mm. patterns inside of our lives. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you kind of were touching on it earlier when you were, you were talking about when we don't have that strong sense of self, right? When we've kind of abandoned ourselves for whatever reason, we haven't been taught. So there's no shame in it. We, we latch onto somebody else. And so what we do, 
and initially that, you know, it's not all bad. That, that's the thing. It's a slippery slope. And, and, mm-hmm. and sometimes two people can do that and actually end up healing. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times what happens, you know, you, you start to grow in that sense yeah. of fullness through, but in a lot of situations, what ends up happening is we latch on to someone else. And instead of doing our own work of healing, mm-hmm. we latch on to that fawning, turning someone else into a project caretaking somebody else, right. following over after and picking up somebody else's mess, right? right? We make our work doing somebody else's work. Mm, that's it, good. That's it good. It doesn't work. It doesn't yeah. work. You know, yeah. it's a recipe for resentment. It's a recipe for being in a, in a, for growing mm-hmm. in toxicity because someone can take advantage of that. Someone can mm-hmm. exploit that then. Mm-hmm. Someone can start to use that against us. We start to realize, you know, parts of us that know God wants more for us start to get resentful, start to be like, I don't, you know, but we don't know Mm -hmm. how to get out. And so this is this dynamic I see time and time again, um, where we're just kind of bypassing our own work to essentially focus on somebody else's work and doing their work for them. Right. Right. Yeah. That's so good. That's so good. Um, and, and so like, what, what is the difference in, well, let me go back to this with, with the codependency, because this is why everybody listening today, you need to get this book. It's on (laughs) audio book too. So, which, Mm -hmm. you know, you can pop that in while you're taking a walk, but especially Mm -hmm. if you feel like anything that I've said about codependency kind of, you know, Oh, that kind of resonates with me. This Mm -hmm. would be such a fabulous book to Mm -hmm. get, but But this is why I love this book, because when you are in codependency, you definitely don't have a true sense of self or or who you are and you don't know how to get there. That's right. That's how to get there. You know, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And that's Mm -hmm. very painful because, you know, Mm -hmm. you don't like what's happening a lot of times. And I mentioned this in the book, people you might even start talking about it. People say, well, you need to set boundaries. Do you know how hard it is to set healthy boundaries if you don't have a strong sense of self? It's really hard. It takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of assertiveness. And that was when I began to notice we're starting the conversation often with boundaries. And I'm like, man, but there's a lot of pre-work that goes Mm -hmm. into being able to to extract yourself from this codependent relationship. If you don't have Mm -hmm. that really strong sense of yourself and that I use the word in the book and I knew this was going to push the envelope a little bit, but a little bit of faith in yourself with God's help. Again, Mm -hmm. that fruit of the spirit of we have, Mm -hmm. we're faithful to God, but there's that that quality of faithfulness of like, I, God didn't design me to be treated in this way. So I need to be faithful to myself too. Yes, yes, yes. And, and really in essence in that, um, and, and I think to me, this like was a huge game changer. It's, it's really, um, idolatry. If I'm putting everybody else's needs first and not paying attention to how God is, is speaking with me. And, um, and this is why your book is so good because it just takes women on that journey. And it literally is, you know, it's like, it's like a muscle that's been an atrophy for years. And so you're like the personal trainer saying that's step right. one, step two, right? Because we, we don't know how to do it. That's um, exactly and, right. and, um, and so I just praise God that he's put this He's put this um, on on your heart. Um, you you also talk in your book about how God has given our bodies, um, our mind and body, with all sorts of ways to discern truth. Mm-hmm. Can you um, um, unpack that a little more? Um, because I, I love that. I think so many times, as a codependent, you're so focused on everybody else's cues that you're ignoring your your That's own. Right. That's right. um, and, and I love that you highlighted that this is a mechanism mm-hmm. that God has put w- within us. Yeah. That's so right. can you share oh, a little yeah. more about that? Yeah. I mean, I think, and, and to me, it's just, I think to myself, well, of course, God designed us, you know, with this beautiful, mm-hmm. we, we, we see our bodies know how to physically heal, right? Our, our bodies, when we get a cut, it bleeds, which alerts us, oh, I need to do something, right? I need to pay attention, mm-hmm. right? We know this with our physical bodies, but it's the same with our discernment of relationships, mm-hmm. of other people, of our lives. Our body gives us cues. We might feel anxiety, you know, um, just the other day, you know, I sent a text and I just thought, had this pit in my stomach. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, I knew that was, you know, it's, just, and, you know, so the body gives us these cues that like, I knew mm-hmm. that I, I didn't honor 
the boundaries of what I know I need to honor in that yeah. relationship. And it came yeah. in this sort of feeling of this pit in my stomach, right? And, and mm-hmm. you know, it's our nervous system. It's And again, those things mm-hmm. can go off kilter. Again, I don't mm-hmm. say we put 100% trust mm-hmm. because even childhood traumas, we can have an overactive right. anxiety response where we're anxious about everybody or mm-hmm. with the fawn response where we're not anxious enough about other mm-hmm. people. Um, mm-hmm. But part of the work of healing is to learn in partnership with God's spirit, yes. in partnership with the Holy Spirit, right? That's the work is the Holy Spirit in John 14 came to live inside of me. Yes. That's what yes. Jesus says. It's, it's, I mean, Jesus even, you know, I'm not going to quote him directly, but says, you know, something even better is coming. It's not just that you'll have me, you're going to have someone living, my, my spirit living inside of you. Yes. Meaning yes. we, we have access, which says to me that that spirit is operating inside of the body, the nervous mm-hmm. system, the mm-hmm. emotional cues. And again, those can go cattywampus. I don't want to say that they can't, but as I do the work mm-hmm. to say, man, Lord, what is that? I always talk about getting curious. What's that? anxiety that I'm feeling with that person. Is that, is that something wrong with me? Or is that a cue that I should pay attention to that that might not be a safe person, that that person might not be trustworthy. Help me discern that, that, how does that come to us? But through some emotions, through some, some of those physical cues that we have to learn in partnership Mm -hmm. with God to go, you've given me, you've equipped me to Mm -hmm. care, to protect myself. That mm-hmm. is wisdom. You know, there's a mm-hmm. lot in the Bible about wisdom, right? And how right. we interact with other people. So we have to learn how to read, how to kind of pay attention. Something inside mm-hmm. of me is saying danger. Maybe I ought to at least get curious about that or something inside yes. of me is angry. Yeah. You know, again, is it that somebody did something that was wrong? And yes. there's a reason I'm angry, in which case I don't have to act, misbehave out of the anger, but I might need to assert myself in order to protect myself going forward. Right, right, right. right. And, and I think so much too is, you know, it's, it's honoring really the Lord and honoring those, um, those cautions, like those caution lights, much yes. like if, if I'm driving my car exactly. and an engine light goes on, yes. well, I don't know what it is. I mean, you know, I don't know. I just know that the light has come on. And That's so right. then the the solution is to pause, yes. to call a mechanic, and to bring yes. my car in to discern That's why right. the light came on. And so God has given us engine lights, That's and the great. engine lights are are what we need to pay attention to, right? And so That's exactly right. Um, and and then see, then I think like if we have that fawning, if we have those childhood messages, mm-hmm. then you know, the enemy can play on all that and twist That's it right. and say, but you're being selfish. You should do this, this, and that. That is, you know, or even if we feel, um, if we feel anger, if we feel all those things, you know, just dismiss it all and don't, yes. don't unpack it. Um, but to me, it helps to look at it like, like engine lights. And I love, I love that. And to use your metaphor, it'd be like, when we see that engine line, if we go that you stupid car, why do you have that light? Right. That's what we do to ourselves. Yes. What's wrong yes. with me? Why do I have? And it's like, why would you? you, you yes. You, 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 you don't do that. You know. Yeah. You say, oh, I, I need yes. this car to work properly. It's, it's, you know, it's the same way we have to treat ourselves. It's a great, great analogy. Yes. Yes. And we have, we have the best counselor, yes. the Holy Spirit. Yes. And, and it, it always happens when you bring that to him okay yeah. i felt this way god can you help me unpack that yeah and then he leads us you know in relationship with him that's right he takes us on this journey and i i love the journey i love the yeah. journey so god god yeah. is good but pay attention <laughs> pay attention to those pay attention to the holy that's, spirit of what what he's right. what he's trying that's to tell true. you so yeah. um so we we talked about um boundaries a little bit um mm-hmm. and i want to bring that back up again just to mm-hmm. mention that you have also co-authored a book called boundaries uh for the soul um mm-hmm. and gosh yes again if you're codependent that's like another atrophy m- um muscle that you need to exercise so i just mm-hmm. praise god that you've written a book about mm-hmm. that um and um but for women why mm-hmm. why for women are boundaries so different? And you touched on this in your book. And I was mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. 
that is so true. Mm-hmm. Like, a, like a man will say, oh, I don't, I don't think I'm going to have time for that. And right. we have such a hard time, like, mm-hmm. you know, like saying that. So why mm-hmm. is that? Why yeah. is that? Well, I think it's all this conditioning we've been talked about, you know, we, we've been talking about, right. As we, I mean, and, and the, if you want to flip it to the positive, I think part of the positive is many of us are very empathetic. So many mm-hmm. women I work with, we, 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 we don't want to hurt anybody. We don't want to yeah. disappoint anybody. We yeah. don't. And that's genuine. Like there's some beauty in it. Right. Right. But it's also, and so I talk, I talk in the chapter about boundaries, what I call the empathy trap where it can become also become a trap. It's a beautiful quality. Um, and also there are times when it can get the best of us mm-hmm. because we can tell where we're going to, where someone else is going to feel bad. And that's not always our responsibility. And in fact, we can get in the way of the work that God wants to do. So I think it's all the things we've been talking about. But the biggest part of it is this idea of we haven't been taught. Men are, you know, according to research, are more conditioned to have an internal, what psychologists call an internal locus of control. They Mm -hmm. tend to trust themselves inherently. Um, Mm -hmm. Women tend, this is across faith lines, although it's Mm -hmm. heightened in Christian communities, Mm -hmm. um, men or women tend to look externally. We tend mm-hmm. to look outside of us. So it's very mm-hmm. hard to set healthy boundaries when we're already conditioned to look outside of ourselves for permission, look outside of ourselves for you know what we want, what we need. Instead of, because boundaries have to flow from this place of internal discernment, which says, I'm at capacity. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm getting hurt in this yeah. relationship. Yeah. Um, this isn't healthy for me that's discernment that comes from the inside out so we first have to connect to that before we can even figure out how to go oh i need to readjust my boundary lines Mm -hmm. because this isn't good for me Mm -hmm. this isn't healthy for me this isn't what i want this isn't what god wants for me because we're not taught to consider our inner you know our inner resources our inner convictions so it's fascinating to me yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's great perspective. That's a that's great perspective. Um, and certainly we see in the Bible that there were many women like Abigail and Deborah and Mary of Bethany when she anointed um, Jesus' feet and Judas was you know criticizing her and so forth and so on and so forth and so on. That there were bold women inside of the Bible, um, and um, and so uh, being a Christian doesn't mean fawning saying yes all the time. That's right. Thank you, Dr. Allison Cook (laughs) for bringing that to my attention. I love it. I love it. So, um, so let's, let's talk about, uh, this. Oh, 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 I I got, I, I definitely want my audience to hear about this in the book. And I was like, hallelujah, this is so great because I've had this question before. Um, so Jeremiah 17 says the heart is deceitful above all things. Mm -hmm. You brought great perspective to that scripture because uh, you women listening today, a lot of us, you know, hear that scripture and we blanketly come back from that and say, I should never trust my feelings. I should never Mm -hmm. trust myself, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So can you please share? what the insights that you gave because it was <laughs> fabulous yeah yeah i mean and and we initially uh with my co-author kimberly miller in my first book we really dive deep into that so if people really want the deeper theology behind that i it's in i touch on it in this book for sure but we, it, it, it blew my mind too because that's the verse we often hear that says you, you know the hardest is people wicked who can mm-hmm. but the same prophet jeremiah he, it, it, a few chapters later is the very same prophet who talked about that is why God is creating a new solution, the new yeah. covenant. The, yes. the law will no longer be external. It was external. It was the Ten Commandments. It was the mm-hmm. code, right? It was outside mm-hmm. of you. Mm-hmm. The law is going to be put inside your heart and yeah. your heart will have the law written on it, which is, yeah. he's prophesying about the coming of the Holy Spirit. Right. <laughs> so again, right. it's this idea of when the Holy Spirit, in my first book, we call it the Spirit-led self. Mm-hmm. When the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you, mm-hmm. you actually now I mean, even, you know, sometimes people say, is it only Christians? And I'm like, you know, I don't know. That's, that's a, that's a big theological question. I think some, right. all of us to some capacity can mm-hmm. govern our own lives. But mm-hmm. man, when you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you can truly lead your mm-hmm. own life yes. with, in partnership with God's spirit, which means when you notice those inner cues, what we were talking about, when that dash, mm-hmm. you know, when the lights go off, 
like you said, we go, oh, I need to pay attention to that. Okay, discernment, what's going on? I am equipped Mm -hmm. to actually make wise decisions, but it is work. It takes a process. It's not magic. It's a process Mm -hmm. of walking in step with the spirit that lives inside of us. Okay, so I'm so glad you just said it's not magic. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, not right. I mean, and, and we all like, I don't like, we, we all want that, right? Because life is painful. So we want like quick relief Magic. from our yeah. plane or we yeah. want to like get it right now, but yeah. it truly isn't, isn't yeah. magic. Um, it's developing that relationship and, and making mistakes like, okay. Oh, that, yeah, that definitely wasn't God. And, but you know, what's beautiful is that on the other side, like you go into, um, okay, God, I want to find healing in this area or or give me direction in this area. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, you get that. Mm -hmm. But what you get even more is relationship. That's exactly right. With the creator of the universe, you get intimacy with him and you're like, oh my gosh, like this is even better than, than what I had going back to that. Uh, The passage in Jeremiah that you were talking about when he prophesies about the Holy Spirit, I love that chapter because initially he's saying, um, God is saying, I'm going to restore this. I'm going to restore that. I'm going to restore this. And he's talking about um, fit like physical restoration Mm -hmm. of material blessings and all of that. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle of the chapter, it's like God says, but there's something even better better coming exactly it's and there is nothing like walking with god there's nothing like in relationship i'm not talking about reading your bible for a list of rules or Uh, following the rules it is like a mountaintop so praise god that it's not magic praise god that it's not magic even though I some days it. I still want the match. <laughs> no, pre- preach it because it even yeah. gets back to your question about why would we want to look at our painful emotions? Because how beautiful to bring a painful emotion into the presence of God and not be alone with it. Oh, that's I so mean, beautiful. that's, that's yeah. relationship to go. I mean that and when you start living that way, you're like, man, this is, this is life. This is a glimpse yeah. of heaven on earth. It's not yeah. that we don't have those emotions. Jesus had them. Yeah, we're not alone in them. Yeah, we're not alone yes. in them because he's right there with us yes. through the power of yes. the Holy Spirit. So yes, yes. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. I can't think of anything more intimate than that. Yeah. Um, and, um, and so, um, and, um, I, just before we kind of sign off today, what are, and, and one, and two, let me just say again, you guys <laughs> need to get this book. There's, uh, there's so many good nuggets in there. Like, the part about good, healthy friendships Mm -hmm. and what's a good, healthy one and what's not a good, healthy one. So much is in this book. (laughs) I love this book. Okay. But, but can you start women today? Like, okay. Like, what would you say to a woman who's like, oh my gosh, that's me. I have no idea who I am. I don't even know where to start. What are some questions that we can at least start um, asking ourselves to, to find out, Mm-hmm. you know, what it is, like who, how God has created us. Yeah. I mean, the first step I tend to say is just to start by this idea of getting curious mm-hmm. when you're washing the dishes, when you're dropping your kids off at carpool, when you're um, walking the dog, you know, when you're whatever writing, you know, whatever um, notice, start to pay attention mm-hmm. to where your thoughts are, what your emotions are. And notice if that's hard for you, if that's scary for you, notice that oh Mm -hmm. i don't like Mm -hmm. doing that okay great Mm -hmm. again we're cultivating this this idea of being curious about ourselves the way that we've learned how to be curious about other people the way we've learned about curious about our kids turning a little bit what am i feeling what am i oh i'm really really having a bad day isn't Mm -hmm. that interesting i've just noticed something about myself and really try you know it's not about shaming yourself it's not about fixing the problem Mm -hmm. it's just starting to notice a name and then maybe you in your time with the Lord, you write, sometimes I'll tell women to, you know, do this little exercise in the morning, just write down, you know, mentally, I'm exhausted, emotionally, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm afraid, I'm sad, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited, you know, spiritually, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, and just, just note it, just, yeah. just start to pay attention and then mm-hmm. invite God, 
Mm -hmm. to, to just notice with you. It's that simple because mm -hmm. as you start to notice, you're starting to build this relationship more mm -hmm. with yourself and inviting God into it. And you start to gather with, you know, gather data. Huh, yeah. I wonder why I'm feeling this way. And then yeah. again, I, I always say to people, it starts to feel overwhelming. If it starts to feel like this is too much, there's too much under the hood I've never looked at. Get mm -hmm. a therapist, get someone to walk mm -hmm. with you. Don't do it alone. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Def. I love that. I love all that. On that note of a therapist, and, and this is like a loaded question, um, <laughs> but can, can you give some advice to our audience, maybe about what to look for in a, in a therapist? Um, uh, and, a, and Hey, one thing we know is we can trust God. Like we've talked about this. So you can pray before and ask God for wisdom and trust your yes. gut. But what, what else would you say are, um, I don't know, important to look for when you're looking for a, a therapist? I would love to share. I want to quote you on that. I, I love what you just said. You said, because it was really profound. You said, pray and ask God for wisdom and trust your gut. That, that right yeah. there was, it's both, right? It's, yeah. I loved that. It's like pray and trust wisdom. And I talk about that in the book and take the best next step you can possibly take. And you can yeah. always course correct. If yeah. you, so, so that's yeah. a tip. You, you know, you, I have an article on my website. If you go to my drallisoncook.com mm -hmm. slash resources, there's an article called mm -hmm. seven ways to build up your support network. And I walk through brass tracks of finding mm -hmm. a therapist. There's also a ton of resources there, but just know that you get to choose, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of Christian counselors look in your region. There's a lot of, I won't go into it there, but there's a lot of like how to's on that, that, um, document, but ask, ask, you know, when you mm -hmm. say, Hey, can I have a 20 minute free consult? Can mm -hmm. I just see and, and mm -hmm. trust your gut? Ask trust God, your gut. do yeah. I feel like I can trust this person or do I not feel great with them? Yeah. You know, have yeah. one session and see how mm -hmm. that's, you get to say, mm -hmm. mm, ask them questions. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's your first opportunity to do some of the things that like testing a relationship, find, you know, find out. You, right. you know, you don't, sometimes I think people feel like, oh, they're the expert. It's like, mm -hmm. you advocate for what you need and you ask questions, you know, and, and a good therapist will honor that. I, that's really good. I love what you just said about you choose. And, mm -hmm. um, and we, we will get the link to that article um, and, and put that also in the podcast yeah. and in the YouTube notes so that it's good. easy access for you guys uh, to share. And I, I do, I love your blog. Your blog is fabulous. That's actually how I found you uh, was, was through your blog. But um, oh, cool. so, so when you guys go there and search, it's a wonderful wealth of, um, of resources and, and wisdom. I highly recommend that too. Um, so yeah, I, I love that to really trust your gut um, with that. And then also I love how you highlighted um, that just because somebody carries a title, it may not be the right fit for, for That's you right. personally. That's so right. I think, you know, we can kind of give that blanket trust over um, mm -hmm. and, and maybe even when, like, I know, like, if I'm looking for somebody to do anything, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, like, we just had someone grind a tree stump this morning. <laughs> That's what the first thing that came to my head, but it's like, I just want to get it done. And mm -hmm. so I don't take the time to slowly to slowly uh to slowly go into it and certainly by the time you said okay I need a therapist yes maybe in that rush mode and um and so just you know take it take it slow with the Lord so yeah if you're in your if you're in a rush mode I would suggest asking a trusted friend asking a trusted pastor asking mm -hmm. a trusted you know someone like you um I, one of the things I say in the article is do the work now if you're not in rush mode it's always a good idea to have vetted someone so that they're there just like a doctor so that they're mm -hmm. there if it because we all hit times when we need someone so yeah yeah that's great yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Dr. Allison Cook, do you have anything else that you just feel led to share um, <laughs> before we close today? Uh, I'm just so grateful. I, uh, the other thing I would just say is just stay in communities like these. Stay mm -hmm. in communities where um, other people are doing this work and trying to yeah. heal because we, it's really hard to do alone. And yeah. Yeah. Um, we need each other. So. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Great thoughts. Great thoughts. Well, um, I highly recommend this book. Um, I love what you wrote about it, that it is a sacred work. Mm -hmm. It is. 
uh, of becoming your true selves um, in, in God. And I just thank you so much for writing this book. And thank <laughs> you so much for taking time to be here with us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate you and all the work that you're doing. Oh, thank you. All right. So here's to the best of you. <laughs> and we know it's it's like a muscle that's been, been an atrophy. So that's Dr. Right. Allison Cook, through her book, she can be like your life coach, right? <laughs> tell, you, tell you exactly what you need to do to just build up that, that little uh, muscle. And, and let me tell you that it's important because God has given you uh, a unique beauty to share. And, um, and there's nothing greater than sharing that and being confident in that. So uh, thanks again, Dr. Amen. Allison Cook. And thanks to everybody for joining in today. <laughs>